Weak Wars is one hell of an add-on, guys, and if you're not using it, you need to pause this video right now, go download it, and then prepare to have your WoW life changed forever. At its core, playing WoW well is really all about keeping track of information and then reacting accordingly to that information. And Weak Auras does a great job of helping you with this with both visual and audio cues on screen while you're playing the game. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys 10 weak ores that I think you should be using if you're running Mythic Plus keys. These are going to range from quality of life improvements to big time weak ores that will actually help you with your gameplay. So let's check them out. All these weak ores are available on wago.io. I did not make a single one of them myself. and I don't take credit for them in any way other than just really appreciating the heck out of the geniuses who made them. If you don't already use Weak Ores, head over to the Curse Forge website and download the Weak Ores add-on. From there, you can type slash WA in game, click on import, and then paste an import string from a website like wago.io. Let's get the most obvious one out of the way, but if you're not playing with some kind of heads up class Weak Aura pack, you need to go get one right now. You can go to wago.io and search your class to easily find pre-made Weak Aura packs by amazing people like Apnar and Luckthos and stick them right in front of your face in game. You don't want your eyes to be moving all around the screen trying to figure out when your cooldowns are going to be up or how much longer is left on a spell. You want this as visually accessible as possible to free up your brain to do other things like mechanics. The nice part about a lot of these pre-made weak aura groups is also that they will not only just display the spell icons with cooldowns, but also do things like flash when an important ability is ready or needed to be cast, automatically adapt when you change your talent build so that you don't have abilities showing up that you aren't even specced into. Number two is one of my favorite quality of life weak auras I just stumbled upon a couple of days ago, and that's this amazing dungeon teleport aura by Mend. Once you import this, all you have to do when you want to teleport to a specific dungeon is open up your Mythic Plus dungeon tab and click on the picture of the dungeon. Pretty freaking awesome when compared to digging through these icons in your spellbook that might have dozens of weirdly named dungeon teleport spells, especially if you've been collecting dungeon ports over the course of multiple seasons. Number three on the list is Affix Weak Auras. If you're playing Dragonflight Season 2, you really want to have a Weak Aura for both Incorporeal and Afflicted. These Weak Auras I have linked here will audibly alert you when these things spawn, tell you how much time they have before their spell gets off, show you how many there are, and give you an idea of how long it will be before another round spawns, so don't leave home without it. Missing an incorporeal or afflicted can be absolutely brutal for your Mythic Plus run, and with these, there's really no excuse not to be aware that they're up. Next up is kind of a combination of two, but it's a B-Res and Bloodlust Timer. These two things are super important to know in a Mythic Plus run, whether you actually have these spells or not. B-Reses are a really valuable resource in M+, that you want to use wisely, and knowing how many that you've got when you're going to get another one is something you should really be aware of. And to go along with this one, I've also got a bonus, and that's a Bloodlust reminder for tunes that actually cast Bloodlust. I am terrible at remembering Lust if I'm not maining a Lust class, and when you're on a Bloodlust character, this weak or will pop up a big gigantic Bloodlust text across your screen and play a boxing bell, which is pretty much impossible possible to miss. I run this religiously on my Shaman and Evoker because forgetting the Lust feels really, really bad and can also really screw up your M plus run. Number five in a similar line of thinking is a raid buff tracker. This one will display if you're missing any raid buffs such as Fortitude or Mark of the Wild, the nice big icon that's hard to miss. If you have a raid buff you can cast on the character you're playing, it will also display how many of your party members have your buff and promptly go away when everyone is covered. Nice easy way to make sure you're keeping everyone in your group fully buffed and that you have all possible buffs from your party members. It also won't display any buffs that your group can't give you. So for example, it won't show arcane intellect if your party doesn't have a mage. I get asked about this one a lot by people that watch my stream, and that's getting a good set of dungeon weak auras. I use little wigs to keep track of important boss timers and abilities, but I also like to supplement this with the dungeon weak aura pack. Call it overkill, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. 
Dungeon Week Auras are nice because they often give you nice audio and visual cue when something important is going to happen, and I feel like they especially cover trash a little bit better than DBM and Little Wigs do, and save you the time of having to customize them so heavily. When I'm streaming, a lot of people ask me how I get DBM or Big Wigs to make those sounds that tell you what to do, but that's not it at all. It's actually this Week Aura pack. So whether you like this one or you want to try something else, I'd highly recommend grabbing one to use alongside your favorite favorite dungeon add-on. This is another one people ask about all the time, and it's absolutely fantastic. A combat cursor weak aura that makes your mouse cursor more visible when your character is in combat. The one I use just puts a pink circle around your mouse cursor so you don't lose it in the mosh pit of enemies, friendly players, and health bars. I'm pretty blind and I lose my mouse cursor really easily, so I totally love this thing. It will only activate when you're in combat, so you don't need to worry about it being distracting when you're just hanging out in town. There's lots of different looks for this, so so if you don't like the pink one, you can head over to Wago and search Combat Cursor to see a whole bunch of different ones. Here's another useful one by Rello called Spell CDs on Nameplates. So this is exactly what it sounds like in Dungeons. Trash that has significant abilities will have an icon with a counter on it to let you know when the ability is going to happen again. Great for scary trash mobs with big time abilities to allow you to have kicks defensives, cooldowns, or whatever you need at the ready. With this aura, not every spell is tracked by default, but you can customize it in the custom options if there's something you want to see or don't see on the mobs bars. For number 9, we've got a Mythic Plus Dungeon Timer. This is the one you'll see a lot of people use. I like the fact that it's easy to move around. You can see how much time you have for plus 3, plus 2, or plus 1 chest easily. And I'll also show you in advance what percent count you'll be at before mobs actually die. So. Nothing super fancy here, but I do prefer it to the default WoW timer. This last one is a quickie, but it's just a floating reminder that your combat potion is up. Combat pots can be an easy thing to forget about in a Mythic Plus dungeon, but it's pretty hard to miss when this bad boy is flashing across your screen, letting you know that your potion is ready. So some of you might be saying, but Donkey, doesn't your screen look like a convoluted mess of garbage with all these weak auras flashing on your screen and yelling at you all the time? I guess you can be the judge of that because this is what my screen typically looks like on a given Mythic Plus poll. The nice thing about most of these weak auras is that they'll go away if they're not currently relevant. Actually, I don't like an overly cluttered UI and I probably could go ahead and hide my action bars at the bottom of the screen since I never look at them. But other than that, I feel like the rest of the information is relevant and I actually do look at it and use it. So. The purpose of these 10 week ores is that you can pick and choose which ones you like, which ones you don't, and hopefully you can find one or two things here that help you. So every week ore I've shown here today is available in the description. Check it out to grab the ones you want. If you're interested in things like my LVUI profile and aura filters and other imports from my UI that you've seen in this video, those are available to channel members on my Discord, so check out that join button for more information about that. All right, so if you guys have any weak words you feel like I forgot about that we just need to have, make sure you leave them in a comment. If you got anything out of this video, you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to see more from me in the future, and check out my stream here on YouTube, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 9 p.m. Pacific. Really great community of players in there. We have lots of fun healing keys. Hope to see you there sometime. Until next time, guys, happy healing.